Okay. Did you do your bill or start your bill at least? Yeah, I've, I've, I've submitted two already. Really? Uh, what about you? I finished it. I haven't submitted it yet. Okay, you think you got it down? I, I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. I've never written a bill before, so. I, it was my first and second time. You say your first or second time? First and second time. I, I did it twice. The, uh, I did it before, and then she went back and changed it. So I had to go back and do it again to put, make the changes. What do you, she, she read it and told you you need to make changes? I had submitted it like uh, this, uh, Thursday or Friday. And then when I looked around Sunday, yesterday, they had changed the requirements. So I had to go in again and uh, change it. So, Like what? Like finding a congressman and then... I had the body. I had to make some adjustments to the body. Huh. Okay, maybe I should submit mine today. And if she has any comments, I can redo it. Uh, aerobic, uh, Rubik, or whatever, aerobic? In the aerobic style? No. It's, where is that? Because I. Cause sure, she'll, she's here now. I'm sure she'll give us uh, give you how it's supposed to be. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, now I'm confused. All right. What's your question, Melissa? Oh, hi. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good um, so the assignment, I did, I already did my bill. However, uh, Mr. Jones and I were just talking and he was telling me that he submitted it and there was a couple things he had to adjust Rubik style. And I'm not really understanding that. There's no Rubik style. Ru uh, a rubric is just the instructions. There's no Rubik oh. style. The instructions or the format that I gave you is what you should follow. Just like the congressman, the title, I am the sponsor. As yeah, well so as the rubric that I put up shows you the point value for each thing that you have to include. Got There's it. There's no okay. such thing. I didn't know. <laughs> no. Did you do yours that way or you did the previous? Did you use the previous format, uh, the one that we get we talked about? I didn't uh, change the format. I just explained it. Okay. All and I did was add explanation on the rubric. Okay. That's all I did. I didn't change anything. All right. Okay. How do I find the rubric? Do you go to? Do you guys go to modules? I did, and I looked up final project, and you had like lists of everything you needed, but I didn't see the points or anything. So it opened last night. I don't know if you looked at it today. It? No, I did it yesterday, so I haven't looked at it today. So it changed. Okay. I, what changed? I don't know. <laughs> Nothing changed. Okay. <laughs> Nothing changed. I, nothing changed. Oh my God, Mr. Jones. It's me too. <laughs> you, know, I, you didn't have this special, uh, the other day we had a different format. And it I did not have a different format. All right, okay. All I did was <laughs> add explanation to what was there. I didn't change anything. All right, okay. You asked me what was what, so I added information so there would be no other questions. Okay, all right. Okay. All right. <laughs> what did you do your bill on, Mr. Jones, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I did it on uh, uh, disabilities, uh, individuals with disabilities and uh, access to education. I, I, I try to, uh, disparities in access to education with people with disabilities. I, my bill proposes to make changes that include uh, people with disabilities. You know what I mean? It says disabilities, but it don't say minorities. So I, I, you know, I wanted to add that and make specifically that that was in the wording of the bill. Yeah. 
Does that sound okay? Does that make sense? Yeah, because you're saying that it's minority, and then on top of it, you have a disability, I'm assuming. Right, right. And so, if, and so, in other words, if you feel discriminated against it as a minority, you have some legislation to back you up or something like that to refer to. Because you have a disability. Right, right. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So what was yours about? Well, I, at first I wasn't even going to do it on health. <laughs> I was going to do it on... Um, education and like the school system however it's a health class so i did it on um homeless sanitation oh, that's good. yeah because yeah, um i was reading the rubric and like the description saying like go to next door and there was like this um petition up back i was actually gonna do it first on um minorities um uh, with uh or, um i'm sorry not my well minorities but uh, illegal immigrants that have health care that don't go to the hospital because they're afraid they're going to get deported oh, okay. so something like uh like making an asylum when they go see seek health care kind of a thing um great, great idea great yeah yeah it's just it, like and because that's the thing it's like you know if they're sick they're the ones in in the fields you know they're the ones Make, getting our food on our plate and yeah. that's a huge huge thing to not be able to seek medical care if you're not feeling well so yeah. so how did it feel doing the assignment may i ask it i you know for me i'm just gonna throw it out there i'm sorry mr Jones. <laughs> go ahead okay, i'm good i mean go ahead i was saying go first I was going to say, for me, and like now I wonder how you would go about asking and requesting things that happen. Like, because I'm asking for money, obviously. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine people like just willingly being like, okay, that's a good idea. Let me give all this money to this. That's pretty much what happens. If you, you just can demonstrate that you have a plan to carry it to fruition, and I don't just mean a blurb like what we're doing right now, because, but if you have a real congressman to back it, you've met with that congressman and consulted with them. You have signatures from the community saying they really want this and so on. There's a, you know, a few more steps to it, but if you can do what we're, if you can complete this assignment, you could do the rest of it. That's it's the whole point of doing it, you know? Yeah. Because you just honestly don't think you have this much say or opinion. And yeah. A like, lot of lay persons are who get many bills on the books. They don't always come from our congressmen and senators authoring them. Or I, even coming up with the idea. How does that work on the local level? It pretty much works the same way. You have to go to like the city council meetings and okay. It works the same way. So say this is a bill and I, I, I did actually like research how much stuff costs. However, I don't know how much it is to maintain this. As, and on top of it, I don't know how much they pay government employees to maintain these things. So I have... I, I can't really justify like, oh, this is going to cost this much, even though I kind of overestimated, obviously. However, it's, these are things like ha you just have to like research a little bit more about like, like janitorial. A little bit more. Um, you could possibly either look at studies that have been done and um, you can guesstimate from there or you can do your own study. You know, just like... Mm -hmm the way studies were coupled together in the reading that we had. You know, there were tests that measured one aspect of what the researcher was trying to get done, but they added another test to it to, um, you know, expand the information or the data that they received. So, yeah, it takes you being organized and 
allowing <laughs> enough time to get all the pieces together, but regular people do this all the time because they're so passionate about their beliefs, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For certain communities, if, um, if your passion is helping the homeless community um, live more dignified, then, you know, I could see you doing that. I could see you doing that. And like I purposely stated, though, it's like a solution to this issue right now that we can actually do something about. However, we need to, like, hopefully this will open more doors and adjustments to other situations where we can help them actually maintain, like, have somewhere to live that's affordable. Right. right. Because that's the biggest issue. However, it's like these are things that we can make happen now, opposed to a couple of years. I'll, can I call you back later? I'm in class right now. Okay. I mean, when I was researching, they said um, Berkeley, or, or I think it was Oakland actually, not Berkeley, 47% um, up in three years for the homeless community. Ooh. 47% 40, up from three years ago. 47% increase? Yes, that's what they said in three years. That's what I found. Do you think that's wrong? No, 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 I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, it's just a big number to wrap your brain around and like, how, what are we doing to allow it to get that far? What are we Great. not doing? <laughs> Don't you think uh, it, it might be the wealthier people with the agenda to make this uh, there? You, you know what I'm talking about, segregated in an uh, economic way? Well, um, that's a, an age-old question and conversation. The wealthy do give their money to worthy causes, but they don't give... Um, as much of their money as we do of ours. So um, <laughs> even still, putting some, um, some brain power and some organization behind these wonderful ideas, any of you all can make them happen. I have yet to read um, your bills. Um, I'm actually kind of half cross-eyed right now. I can't read <laughs> anything else. I've read so much. I'm sure. You have two classes you're doing like this, right? Two here. I also teach teachers how to teach. Mm. And I have a class going on with them right now that I've mm. done alongside this whole time with you all. It's been, and I, and I got a puppy. <laughs> that's why i work have bags and coffee <laughs> yeah, i'm really tired but i'm very happy with um the work that you all have done um very happy with that and i really hope that this helps spark conversations outside of the class and and movement or actions outside of this class. Movement. Yeah. And, it, and it's a weird time. Um, that's what I felt about the whole um, marching in the streets. I'm not I'm gonna lie, it's a weird yeah. time. So yeah. like, since I am, um, you know, I was able to get like some unemployment. I felt the need to donate a bunch because I, I, you have to do something. You have to do something. Sit here and just watch things happen around you and just talk about it. You can't, talking about it something, because this is actually really good because you're actually giving reasons behind this and proof. And that, that's what a lot of people in certain mindsets say they need and it's right there. And then, yeah, like, crazy because it's just like you watch other things you like see things and you just don't know like it's just more up in your face now I feel like it's not different than 10 or 15 20 years ago but it's more up in your face and I think that has a lot to do with media like social media you can't escape it you go to you, can't, you know you can't escape it if exactly. it's you know it's not just 
the news platforms that are talking about it, everyone is talking about it. Do you mind putting your phone on a okay, uh, vibrate I, or? <laughs> all right, I'm, sorry, I'm gonna turn it down. All right, I, I was uh, I'm expecting something, but anyway. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. okay, but I'll 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 turn. I'll, I'll turn it down. <laughs> you are a popular man. I got <laughs> stuff going on. I got stuff going on. I uh, yeah. Right. I had a a delivery that just came just before class started and that was my reason for logging on late i had to switch rooms and right. take care of that and mm. all right i turned it off so no 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 don't turn it off i don't uh, I mean, you know, you know it, it, I break. that phone and created a lot of issues not with this class but other other ones so, so. Ah. i can't deny you your um your uh, contact well, well, it's, all good. it's only two hours we can pick up things later Okay, I appreciate it. All right. Um, any other comments about the bills that you all have submitted, or the process, or what came up while you were doing it, or did you get angry while you were writing, and <laughs> whatever? It, I, it was truly a learning experience. I, you know. It, it, you know, the work, it wasn't been the first time I ever did anything like that. It was, uh, I learned a lot. And then it's, it's not, it's not rocket science stuff. You, you could almost like, like you said, we, we don't have nothing but the time to do right now. Sit around here, research something that we are, you know, we're concerned about and find a way to, uh, to you know, write a bill or, or, or find out what we need to do, who we need to contact and stuff like that. And that, and one small way that might be moving in the right direction that might get something started you know you never know you never know so yeah. in honor of what we're talking about today I, my shirt visualized <laughs> blackness <laughs> hey yeah. you know, i'm i'm surprised i don't have my earrings on i just you know i was thinking about uh, i was thinking about something for uh you said the, the course feedback or something like that. And I was thinking I came in here trying to get some help with how to manage my blood sugar. I uh, <laughs> turned into a film critic, uh, a lawyer. You know, <laughs> give me five weeks and I'll change your life. That's all I got yeah. to say. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I've, um, I've enjoyed this immensely. Yeah. Even though it's been a lot of work Right. Um, that's okay. Right, right, right. A lot of work for um, good stuff. Right, that's right. Experience, I mean, I'll never, probably never experience again. You know? You'll never have Donna again. You ain't gonna uh -uh. experience it again. I'm gonna well, start with, <laughs> with you in another class or something. <laughs> You're okay. teaching a call. <laughs> Well, this is that's the you, only you put on your tennis shoes and run away and I hear gravel crunches. <laughs> so actually each one of my classes are a little bit different. So this one has a different format. It's uh -huh. more conversational than my regular intro to health. Women in health is conversational, but it's it's serious and deep. And then human sexuality is human sexuality. <laughs> I hate that it's like online, it. but I try to make the class as lively as I can, whether it's online or face to face. But when it was face to face, I had all kinds of stuff going on. Sure. Love that class. Love that class. A lot of energy, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Can't so imagine. Because I would always have really unique guest speakers. I'll just say it like that. One night the Dean saw, um, I went to the Dean and asked for a fire extinguisher, right? <laughs> and he says, Donna, he just said here, he said, I don't even want to know why you want it. <laughs> You're always doing something, something outside the box. I'm, just take it. <laughs> because I had, um, someone to come in and do fire play and um fire play, yeah, fire play. 
Oh. I don't want to um, explain it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It'll spark a whole conversation, but just to be safe, because there was actual fire, I needed to make sure everyone would be safe. So I got a fire extinguisher. When all you have to do really is just put a, a towel on the person and it, and it goes out. But, but that's a whole nother conversation, whole nother class. So today we're going to, this is our last class. Um, after today, Wednesday and Thursday, we're just having our oral presentations. So I'm going to try to get through as much of the material as I possibly can. Um, yeah, that's all I got to say. <laughs> okay, so there's two Yamoja practices that we're actually going to get into today. One is language is power. The reading for chapter nine really talked about using language as power, um, which is, it, it, it relates to this material as well as um, all of the materials that we're going to discuss today and the Black Lives Matter movement which will come up in Sankofa, so. All right, so language is power. When we recognize and validate the language that our students bring to the classroom, that which they can create amongst themselves, our students open up to the power of language. We can help them to develop a sense of pride, ownership, and responsibility in their own speaking and writing. And that's what I try to do with you all with the film. So. I wanted the content to be, oh, for you to say certain things, but you could have said it in your own way. All right, that's the reason why I use film instead of, instead of standardized tests. Okay, um, la la la. Okay. By doing so, we can bring our students inside the conscious experience of wielding language, all types of language, academic, standard, Black English, theoretical. Our classrooms can be a multilingual experience, which provides an impetus for our students to represent themselves while crossing bridges into other unfamiliar language they are bound to encounter in their lives. When our students experience language as power, curiosity, playfulness and agency, replace what might have been uh, standoffishness and uncertainty. So when this is saying that when people try to make us talk a certain way or they on, only understand us if we say things um, using certain words, then that limits, um, that limits our ability to communicate with other people and mm -hmm. it stigmatizes us and oftentimes will cause you to just shut down and not communicate. So I wanted you all not only to have the freedom, but um, I hope that it would have encouraged you to speak more. When I would give a minimum of three or four sentences, many of you just stuck to that. You just did the minimum instead of going beyond that. And really what I wanted you to do, what I was encouraging you to do is to just talk. Just say it like you wanted to say it. When in the beginning I said, I want you to be able to respond to the tests and the discussions without judgment. And I really meant that. So if you got pissed off and you said, I fuck this, blah, 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 blah. I would have understood <laughs> that. I would have understood that and wouldn't have um, held it against you if you were just simply communicating. What's going on now with COVID, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, and um, being forced to have to take classes online, mm -hmm. being forced to have to shelter in place. Each day when we turn on the news, we don't know what 
um, requirements there's going to be. You don't know whether you can go outside, or you can, whether you have to put a mask on, you don't have to put a mask on. You don't know. And then this morning I hear that um, many of uh, one particular brand of hand sanitizers are being, um, are toxic. How asinine. So hand sanitizers are toxic because they're using the wrong kind of alcohol. They're using um, wood alcohol, methanol, instead of ethanol. Mm -hmm. What is wrong? Okay, what, just to make a profit? I don't get it. So all of these things and the social climate on top of it. And I'm going to give you some numbers that just make the hair on the back of my neck stand up in a few minutes around COVID. It's too much. It's too much. So considering all of that, if you had of unleashed, you could have got how whatever number of maximum points for unleashing because I wanted you to really use language as power. Okay. So if you ever have a class with me again, you know, you can just let loose. Okay. The other Umoja practice that I want to share with you is live learning. So live learning is risky because if you are not um, a seasoned facilitator and everybody want to talk at the same time or everyone want to take the conversation in different directions, it's hard to open that up and sit with it and allow it to happen. So that's where live learning can be risky because you could lose control over what's going on. And, <clears throat> you know, I don't lose control too often, but <laughs> it could happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And if once you lose, <laughs> thank you, once you lose control, it, uh, for some, it's hard to get things back on track, especially in this medium. If I'm in your face, oh, I got a million tricks to get your attention. But we're online, what am I going to do? Use my voice inflections to make you be quiet? Or just mute you all? I mean, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's how they do so, <laughs> so live learning can be risky. It is freewheeling and open. The instructor yields control of meaning and understanding in the classroom while keeping a keen eye on learning as it emerges. So if just say we were in the classroom and I had you in small groups and there's conversation erupting everywhere, but there's one really intense one going on right here. I might walk over to that intense group just to hear but in a Umoja classroom, for things to get loud, for there to be music on, for there to be, um, there might be a curse word or two, but it's not disrespect, understand? It's still a controlled classroom, except for students realize they have um, some control over the classroom themselves. And it actually works really well. Um, in any case, live learning implies that the learning experience is generative and performative. In a live learning situation, the exact content and learning experience are not known before the class session begins. So I wouldn't, where you all are looking for what's going to happen today, that's not what happens in a Umoja classroom. I'm like, you guys are getting on my nerves because <laughs> that's not even what goes on here. And I don't mean that in a mean way. I'm saying that you're not allowing the experience to happen. You're looking at this class like all your other classes, which is not your fault. Mm -hmm. But this class is like, you know what? I might change the uh, agenda when I walk in and see your faces. Right? Because your energy might say you want some, you need something different than what I would like to accomplish today. And 
Believe me, I got a big bag of tricks. I can always switch directions in a classroom. And that's what the Umoja community allows for. So it can be an even greater learning experience because it validates you, it acknowledges you where you are. It is no secret that when students come to class, they bring their full selves with them. So if they got into an argument at home, that walks into a classroom with them. If they didn't get any sleep the night before, that walks into the classroom with them. If they're hungry, that walks into the classroom with them. If they know that they're gonna uh, have to leave the classroom and walk into something dangerous, or, or something that they don't want to deal with afterwards that comes into the classroom with them. And we have to manage all of that. So where my standardized classes, I might walk outside and talk to you, but I don't bring that into the classroom. In a Umoja community, if they're so moved by what's going on, we can bring it to the community and just talk about it. We'll pull a circle around you abandon what we were going to talk about that day and just focus on what's going on in the room that's totally different right yeah, yeah. okay so let me continue <laughs> um surprise and original language burst out all over the classroom the instructor and the instructor facilitates and calls the learning that is happening. Live learning intentionally captures and documents learning in real time. It is a way of having a discussion that really flies while focusing the insight, capturing on its boards and in notebooks. So the discussion does not disappear after the students leave the class session. That's what I'm hoping will happen with the material that you'll continue to think about it, you'll continue to act on it, you continue to share it in your conversations outside of not just today, but even Friday when you let it go, or Thursday when you let it go. Okay. Um, it is a way of having a discussion that, re okay, well, I'll let that unpass that. It is democratic and analytically rigorous at the same time. Live learning demonstrates to students through their own words that language is powerful. Ideas and text are rich and can be made their own. Most importantly, live learning demonstrates to the students that they are smart and deep. That's so important because in most classrooms, Intelligence is measured in one way, one way, but not in a Umoja classroom. I wanna get to know you so I can acknowledge your gifts that you bring to the table, right? I don't wanna just talk to you and share what I know. Ms. Donna, we can't hear you.
Can you hear me now, Doha? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, I don't know. What I didn't put it on mute, though. Okay. Maybe that's what Jimmy was talking about. Mm. His ear. Anyway. Okay, so I'm going to move on to... Sankofa. I'm going to wait until Jimmy gets back. However, while we're waiting, um, any other comments, you guys? No other comments? Okay. So, Jimmy, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. I'm going to put Sankofa on. Okay, Africa, in Africa, there's an estimated 1 billion people that live in the continent of Africa, 1 billion, that's amazing. Okay, so part of our language of power is the acknowledgement of the Black Lives Matters co-founders. Patrice Colors uh, co-founded the Black Lives Matter movement with Opal Tometi. So this, this first lady with um, her hand on her cheek is Patrice. No. Opal Tometi is the young lady with the blonde, I believe. I don't see anybody. It, yeah, I don't see any don't picture. See anybody? Okay, hold on one second. Oh, okay, let me actually go back. Okay, new share. Okay, can you see Africa now? Yeah, that's right. So again, one billion people in the continent of Africa. All right. So these three ladies, Patrice Colliers, Opal Tometi, and Alicia Garza, are the three ladies that co-founded the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, Black Lives Matter is a call to action in response to the murder of unarmed 17-year-old teenager Trayvon Martin. Um, and due to the Stand Your Ground law, Trayvon's murderer, George Zimmerman, went free. And I just wanted to make a note <laughs> that he went free. All right, Zora Neale Hurston is an author or was an author, folklorist, and anthropologist. She spent her early years studying and collecting folklore throughout the South and the Caribbean. She worked to record stories and tales of many cultures, particularly African-American. Her 1920s Harlem apartment was a hot spot for social gathering during the Harlem Renaissance. And Zora worked with famous poet Langston Hughes on a play. She penned several more plays during her lifetime. And her most famous novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, um, she wrote it while studying voodoo in Haiti. 
Frederick McKinley Jones, uh, inventor. He held 60 patents with around 40 specifically for refrigeration. Jones created several inventions for his local area in Halleck, Minnesota, including a radio transmitter, portable machines, and a snow machine to help doctors get around town easier. He developed a refrigeration system called the Thermo King. And through the Thermo King, Jones helped create the transportation of frozen foods. He made the U.S. Thermal Control Company a multi-million dollar company. And he passed away in 1961. All right. St. Martin de Porres. Um, so Martin asked the Dominicans of the Holy Rosary uh, Priory in Lima, if he could volunteer his services, he felt that giving of himself is the only way he could feel a sense of belonging in the world. At age 12, he became a barber surgeon, cut hair, healed wounds, drew blood, and gave medicines at age 12. At age 15, he became a servant boy for the Dominican Coven of the Rosary and moved up to church officer quickly. In the spirit of giving, he distributed money to the poor. St. Martin is considered the first black saint. He is known as the saint of the barbers, black people of mixed races, innkeepers, public health workers, and more. So he is the saint of, known as the saint of those communities. And that is Sankofa. That is Sankofa for today. Mm. Okay. So I wanted to spend some time and talk about um, the chapters and the movies. So in general, what did you guys think of, let's just start with the book. What did you guys think of the book? Just medicine. Uh, it was a good book. It was really, I, I learned a lot of stuff in there. Uh, it, toward the end, it was, uh, it got a little legalistic and, and stuff like that. And I didn't, I, I couldn't grasp that, but uh, it, it, it kind of opened my mind. It's like a walk through your life for me. Is a walk through your life. Some of the stuff that we take for granted, the way I responded to a lot of stuff in my life, and it, you know, it, it it described it. You know, I'm talking about I go to, you know, I go to VA hospitals, and sometimes going down there is a trip. You know what I'm talking about? I have to, you know, fortify myself and get, you know, get ready to be down there, and. Uh, I got to, I, you know, it, it, it talked, I got in touch with, I guess, my weakness, but I think it's social conditioning. Uh, you, you know, like we try to get along and go, uh, go you know, go along and to get along and stuff like that. It's not the best, always the best course, because if you do, they'll keep treating you the same way. Yeah. And so you got to, you got to find that fine line of how to be uh, assertive without being offensive. And I think as a black man in America, that's the fine, and that could, that's a tipping point because some people come at you real crazy because you're a black man in America. You know what I'm talking about? They're trying to make you go off. Yeah, react. That's right. <laughs> you right. Know. Yeah. And we just have to be smarter than that. So uh, when do you get to the point where you need to punch, punch a joke? You know what I'm saying? Bye out. You know yeah, but you know, I, I'm just going to. What? I'm just gonna say um, we could get away with that when we were young, we were young teenagers and stuff. You know. Yeah, I'm just gonna say when I was younger, my reaction to things was much different than it is today. And yeah. I, my saving grace is information. To be honest with you, it's information and it is 
um, taking time to center myself, relax myself. If I can think, if I've had a good night's sleep, I, I can handle almost anything, <laughs> to be honest with you. That's another thing I want to talk about are sleep logs. Um, if I've had a good night's sleep, if I've uh, eaten a good meal, if I'm hydrated, if I've, uh, I don't know, stocked up on some information recently, I'm good. I'm really good. Come at me. Invite me to a conversation so I can share some things with you because I don't have to get angry. I can share information with you. If you don't accept it, that's okay. That's okay. If Why do you feel would be disrespected? Why how you feel like, I, you, like if you call anything but a woman? How would you be treated? How would you be mad? How would you deal with that? How would you I, it all depends on who said it and what was going on with me at the time. If I am, like I said, if I'm good because I've slept well and all of these things is working for me, it wouldn't matter if someone disrespected me, I could walk away. I could deal with that. All of those things that I mentioned for me are pieces of my armor. Not just my t-shirt, but they're really pieces of my armor that protect me. If I am stumped for words, that's frustrating when somebody comes at me. So my frustration is really what I'm responding to. It's not even the ignorant thing that the person said to me. It's my inability to respond in time that brings me frustration. So if somebody jumped off and called me all kind of bitches, I wouldn't care as long as my armor is straight. But if I'm out there naked, right. tired, and irritated already, they gonna get it. See, well, but I, you know, like we used to play <laughs> the dozens. Being honest, we used to play the dozens, and, and that's what started kind of started to rap. But we used to play the dozens. But I find now that it's guys that can't play the dozen. They want to talk bad about you, but when you talk, uh, to, uh, spit at them back. They, they, they get all puffed up and stuff like, wait a minute, you know, you know what I'm talking about? And it's like, well, um, I understand what you're saying, but that has never been a game that I would have played because some ignorant person is always going to say something about your mama, and that is never an okay place for me to be. I don't care who you are. So if you mention my mama, we're going to fight. We, we used to go <laughs> bear, and we're going to fight. They can't do that today. They don't get down like that. They can't. Well, I never got down like that, ever. That's just not a good place to be. But I'm saying all that to say what? that when I was a kid, if someone said something, I had a certain reaction to it because I did not know the things that I know today. If the same thing happened to me today, my reaction nine times out of 10 would be much, much different. So knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. For me, it's power. Okay. So um, anything else about the book? I got all these people on. <laughs> Can somebody unmute and talk? Thoa, Isabella, Amina, Doha. Hi, Mickey. They be having some uh, very nice comments uh, to the discussions when we all, uh, you know. And, uh, you know it's the last day of class. Do you know how hard I worked on this class? I want to see yeah. people. I want to see people. I'm sweating right now. It is the last hour. Do you know how many hours I spent on this fucking class? <laughs> somebody <laughs> unmute and show your face and talk. Uh, what was that uh, line, young lady, uh, Amina? Is she, uh, she here? She here? She always has something nice to here. say. I'm, I'm here. I'm right here. 
<laughs> well, I, I like what you be saying in the discussion when we do the poll. Marina is amazing. I love, huh? I love your contributions. That's why I want you to Hi. talk. Yes, talk. Um, I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I'm, I love the book. I think for me, um, it was just getting past because the author is like a lawyer, right? Yeah. Mm. It was getting past the the kind of lawyer conversation because I'm I'm not there yet mentally, so it was a little challenging for me, honestly, um, reading the book. But once you get past it and you get where she's going and what she's saying, it's magical. You're like, okay, I see, I see, right. like I, I get the connection. Right. It I think that's take the me, point it where um, where she was repeating herself. I could skim through that and get to that next good piece. And yes, yes, she does do that. Right. So. For me, it gave me enough information. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, for me, it was a, an important conversation to involve others in. Definitely. You know, so I appreciate you all hanging in there and going through um, the bulk of the book along with me. Now that I know the book, I would direct students to certain parts of it instead of making them responsible for the entire chapter. Um, but again, I got the book a week before class started, so I read it along with you all. And I still think, I still love it. I still think it's appropriate. I just think that certain parts of it, um, students don't have to read in order to, to get what they need from it yeah definitely like um i definitely enjoyed the book and it's like seeing this class is one of the reasons like i knew a little bit about health disparities only because i was kind of studying like um um black women and the rate of 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 death while pregnant and while giving birth and i just thought that was like astonishing because we're like we have modern medicine why are women dying giving like in childbirth like that's exactly. crazy and um and a lot of times bigger than other babies so what's yeah exactly i'm like what is going that makes no sense no. Um, and so uh i knew a little bit about it but like seeing it like how how embedded it is in the system and like policies that was crazy so i've enjoyed this class fully though Thank you. I worked at Black Infant Health for almost four years and I ran their, managed their support center. So I helped to take care of the expectant and the new moms and the um, healthcare workers that served them. So I learned a lot through that experience, but it just, it made me a little bit more a little angrier and a little bit more willing to do more to educate the community around it. Um, another part of um, what we did was we brought um, the moms together for support group. We gave them healthy meals. We gave them wonderful baby showers. Um, and we brought in doulas and midwives and paired them with them to help them through their pregnancies. So that was really, really um, important and it improved the health outcomes for San Francisco uh, mm -hmm. in particular. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's not easy. It's not easy and it's a lot to be done. Well, I mean, people don't even know about this, but how would you even... You know, you need to know about this in order for things to be done. So your class should be mandatory for the healthcare facility people. Like any, so anybody that's going to healthcare, it should be mandatory. Thank you. It's very true. It's Thank true. You. you were gonna say something else? 
don't know. It's just like hurts my feelings. <laughs> like, it's like you're saying about getting upset. It's like once I start talking about it to my friends, like I get angry. I start screaming. It's like you're saying, oh, like, you know, on the computer, you're conducting yourself. Like, and I always apologize for me screaming and like, well, because it's like I'm screaming at people that agree with me. However, it's just one of those things where I just get really like passionate because it just doesn't make sense. It's like, I was like, it just like, like what Mr. Jones said about voting and it's just all that crap. It's like, it doesn't make sense the way the system works and how people would vote for somebody that does not benefit that. Like they do, does not give a fuck about that. And that's what's happening. It's like these people are coming together. Like I always say, it makes sense why that CEO guy from Goya supports Trump. He's making money off of that. But these people that I, I know, I know, but it makes sense. He's only one and vast majority is not him. Right. And the vast majority is still effing fucking voting for him. It's like, and still supporting him and that he does not support them. And I, I straight up said to my friend yesterday, I was like, yeah, and this woman tried to tell me and I was like, yeah, she's just ready for him to grab her by the fucking butt. It's like, seriously, this shit is like, makes me angry because she's poor. She's a poor white woman that's 72 years old that's living off her fucking kids because she like has no money. I'm like, he does nothing for you. And you're still like, I don't know. It's just, yeah, yeah, but if... If she can be motivated to go to the polls, we need 10 people on the other side to be motivated to go to the polls because it does, your vote does matter. It, it does. It, it does, does matter. It, but you have to make sure you're understanding. It's like, and that's why I tried to explain to someone too about the system. I was like, we're just voting against the lesser of evils. I know it's a fucked That's up. True. That is true. That, that is, is true. true. I'm sorry, but it's true. It is true. Who's oppressing less people? Who's oppressing less people? people? That's who we're voting for. Yeah, That's, I get it. Point blank. <laughs> point I, blank. I get and it. it. It's because it's all fucked. It's all fucked because it's like it's helping some but hurting most. It's like that, and that is the bottom line. It's like why don't we just all get help and not fuck over anybody right <laughs> it's right. simple it's fucking simple it's like i work hard for what i have and i don't try to take advantage of people to get it it's just fucking common fucking it's, sense it's common it. sense is common courtesy i yes, totally i get angry <laughs> i totally agree with you it's just but, but it, yeah. i just don't get how anybody and circumstantial situations like that would even consider someone and then i purposely wrote watched it uh because i was seeing that and like you're saying it's everywhere so i was like scamming through instagram i was like what the fuck is going on like i'm kind of i try not i watch the news i look at stuff but i don't like because it's just so much and it's just i get it but i was like that goya shit what the hell is going on so i watched the news the fox one where it's like on his side and it's just i like doing that because my like you know they manipulate whatever oh, obviously this is not having to be manipulated but i like doing that because you can literally just see where the faults are where the disgust like where this is wrong even though they're condoning him and supporting him because it's fox news they're the boycott not the boycott but no 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 but it's I great know. if you could be smart enough like you said like but to Mr. Jones, just no, we have to be smarter than that. We have to, like, we have, like, it's nice to know that you we, see things for what we got to strategize. We got, we got to, to strategize. We got to, we got to be almost a third party, an unofficial third party, and they got to negotiate with us because we got, we, let's say, we got 20 million votes to give to somebody who can, who can, who can, who can handle our platform. And if you, if you can, you know, that's good. And next time, if you don't do it, your ass is out of there. We use that 20 minute votes for the next person. Well, that's yeah. usually that's how we have to do it. I mean, we have to get to that point. It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not, we need yeah. to stop being sheep. You know what I'm talking about? Laying around with some promises and shit. Let's yep. get something for get give me something for my folks. Boy, as soon as I say curse, y'all say the oh, yee hee. That's <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. You know, you know what I'm saying? Oh. <laughs> It's true, though, because I don't have you, my part if I don't get well no more, and I bet you. Right, I, I totally hear you. 
I hear you. I hear you. In the right way, the way God wanted it to be. <laughs> what were you saying, Melissa? I don't uh, know. The way God wanted it to be. So much to say, girl. All right. I'm going well, to let you go. No, I, I would like to hear from other people. Honestly, like um, Isabella, San Andrea, like all of them. Doha is great at writing on her. Yeah. On her feed. She always has a great thing to say. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Doha is real good. Yeah. I think everybody is. Um, I think, Makai, you're clear. You just don't say a lot. But you're definitely clear about what you are saying and how you feel about things. Um, I just encourage you to say more. Just continue to use your voice and say more. But everybody, everybody. does a very, very good job at um, taking time to understand the question and give um, a thoughtful answer. Oh my goodness. Reading is yeah. hard. But it is, okay, I'll put it this way. It's one of the more enjoyable things I do in this class that's different from face to face. Face to face, I get your energy and I get a rich conversation, but everyone doesn't comment in the classroom. When I require comments online, I get comments from everybody. So that's the, the good part of it. Um, I can hear your voice even when you don't unmute <laughs> and talk directly to me. I can still get a chance to hear your voice. Um, so. And uh, what I like about your questions is a lot for perspective. How much you want to bet? <laughs> what did you say, Mr. Jones? I, I was just uh, taking bets. <laughs> taking bets. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You're having fun. Just having fun. I'm like, you know, this is last day of class. You know how we still do <laughs> kids and stuff. Hey, you know, the last week of summer school and all that stuff would be wild and crazy. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah, but bottom line, this should be mandatory. You should be educated and know this. There's a, like, and that's what I loved about the book. She brought, like you said, a lot of different types of tasks. And she even did the devil's advocate a little bit, you know, and that was really nice. It was really nice. But if you don't know what's going on and, you know, I'm white. So it's like one of those things where it's, I didn't really understand until I took a sociology class about how it is. Like, you just don't think of things like that because it's my perception of the world. It's where I decided to navigate myself and my world. and then. You know, until someone explains to you how it is, then you can't truly empathize with them. You know, and I, I love it. Imagine um, all of us living in the same world and it not being the same world for us. That's hard to imagine. But you can. <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> I keep, imagine this class. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Of course it could be imagined. And realized. Realized. So, okay, I'm going to get off the book. And let's talk about the movies. Well, we started with 13th and then went to American Circumcision. And then went to The Dating Project. And then we ended with Blind Spotting. So that is um, all different types of films, pose all different types of question. I think I chose the film because they are great conversation starters. They're informational. And I felt like you all could walk away with something from each of those films. Is there a takeaway from any of the films? Any of them stand out for you guys? For me, uh, blind spotting. You know, I, I can relate to uh, as a young man, I was wild and crazy. I, you know, 
all of that kind of stuff. Uh, and I can understand where, where they're coming from. And they, they were right here in Oakland, too. And I know if you were running with the, the wrong folks, how, you know, what your young life can be. And so, and I think they were trying to come, come they were coming of age with that. And, you know, that's, that's, that's a period that we go through. If you happen, don't apply yourself. Uh, you know, you could become for things beyond your control, a broken family or uh, what have you. And you find, you find yourself easier to be attracted to the wrong group of people that we run it with. And so I can relate to that. I think both of them, have, you know, after the incident with the little boy, I think both of them kind of grew. And then, then when he had the, the situation with the cop, I kind of think they got to kind of look at themselves, look into the chasm and see something. And, 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 and they didn't go there where they could have went. And so it was hopeful. That still ended hopeful, in my opinion. Right, right. That's a good point. No, any thoughts about um, American circumcision? Oh. When, <laughs> when I brought it up before, I got silence. And I don't know if it's because it's hard to watch, if you didn't agree with it, if you were thickened by it. I didn't know. I'll just say for myself, um, I had already, I had seen a circumcision before the film. So seeing the circumcision and hearing the babies cry was not new to me. It's no easier to watch, but it wasn't new to me. Knowing that there are so many different groups that have formed to educate um, and protect the um, male genitalia is one of the bigger pieces that I got from the film because I didn't realize how many activist groups there were out there. So, yeah. Uh, it was three, two or three years ago, there was a story on the internet about a young black boy that had been, uh, it had, he'd been castrated essentially uh, with a bot procedure and stuff like that. And some people were saying that it was deliberate. And uh, I, I, you know what I'm saying? Why would you do that now with all of this information out here? Why would you do that to a kid? And you know what I'm talking about? If there is a problem later on in life or something like that, then they can address that then as a, a necessary medical procedure. But it don't make no sense now you know, on a, from a religious religious level or whatever level, to do that, why? Why? I mean, why we still well, do that? Most of us, most parents want their child to look like everybody else. It, it to be honest with you, it has less to do with hygiene. Um, maybe religion has a lot to do with it, but hygiene is less do you believe that you got less chance of getting uh, hiv if you uh circumcise? no 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 i'm not saying they're right about it i'm saying those are some of the reasons that are used oh mm -hmm. yeah hygiene but i'm saying more often it's because the parents want their child to look like them oh. they don't want them to look different Okay. And they're uneducated about the fact that it, it didn't have to be done to them either. Either mm -hmm. they didn't. They don't realize that. But it is a choice. Isn't that like, something that's done right after delivery or something? I don't of know. Of course, okay. it's done then. And the reason why they say they do it then, and they know now that it's not true, but they say that um, infants won't feel it. Huh. <laughs> I was like, if you heard that baby cry, you know they felt it. You know they felt it. So how could you, a medical professional who does this all day every day, could 
um, fix their mind to believe that. I just, I don't get that. There's a lot of stuff in the human experience that, uh, what they call it, co cognitive dissonance, or don't make sense. You know, you think about it, don't make sense. I've known men who have gotten it done as adults, and they're like, what the hell did I just do? You know, uh, it is a painful procedure, whether you are an infant or an adult. But if it's something that, if the decision is made for you, that's one thing. If you make the decision to do it, that's another. But either way, it's a painful experience. I, I, you know, it would have to be pain that will, would might make uh, motivate me to do that as a grown man. You know what I'm talking about? I have to be hurt and uh, really bad to kind of even consider that. You know what I'm talking about? If it's done worked up to this point, I'm good with it. You know what I'm talking about? And leave me, uh, you know, leave me that choice. You know, let me have that. Right, right. I don't, you know, it's a lot of stuff we need to re rethink as again with this medical. That's what I was talking about. It. All of this stuff comes up. All of this. And then with the female side of that, what's what's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that is one question that comes to mind. What's yeah. up with American doctors carrying it out here is another thing. I'm like, first my mind is already blown. Now you're gonna blow it two or three more times. Why are American doctors doing that? Money. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't get it. I feel the same way, like this documentary like just blew my mind because it was like, the first, even just the starting like intro was intense. And I was like, oh snap, wait, what did I just get myself into? And then they go through all of this and then to bring up the fact that like they were gonna say it was okay to like do this to girls just so that it would be okay to do it to boys. Like that blew my mind. I was like, what are you talking about? You're, li you're willing to like, what did they say? Like pierce or nick, like the, the clitoris of a little girl. It was a, like it was a, a clitoral nick. Yeah, in order to justify it. And I was just like, I don't, I don't trust any of you. I don't care how flowery you make it sound. That's yes. horrible. That's awful and traumatic. Traumatic. <laughs> Unnecessary. Unnecessary. So and it was honestly, it was honestly just so that they were like given an excuse, like, oh, okay, like we're not discriminating. Like you could do it to boys and girls, like it's no big deal. No, it's a huge deal. That's crazy. A huge deal. <laughs> oh man. This is the one of the ones where I was just I was living for a couple of days. And like, couldn't get it off my mind. Yeah, and I like I, how uh -huh. in the documentary, they were saying like, oh, people do, you know, when they find out about this, they do like the deep research and they're staying up at night. And that was literally me. I was like, why don't people know about this? This is crazy. Right. They said, you open up, start doing research on it and it's endless. The internet yeah. up is endless. So, oh man. Yeah. That's kind of what I hoped some of you, uh, the experience some of you would have when you started digging up information to create your bills. Like sometimes you don't even realize how much um, information or data is available on certain subjects, certain communities. It's amazing. Okay, I'm going to move to the dating project. <laughs> it's the film even though it's a couple of years old but I still think it's fairly current because so many people don't date they have no concept of what dating is or how a relationship should go or how you should conduct yourself many people don't have swag. They, you know, they don't know how to talk to people. They don't know how to ask people out for a date or know what to do on a date. All they know is that, you know, texting and maybe I might 
we might have sex, but I, I don't know what to say to you, and I don't know what to do on a date. That's what the documentary was saying. Not what you all have said, but in my conversations with most of my classes, that is the consensus. <laughs> that dating is something that's pretty foreign and just hanging out is very common. Hookups are very common. And it is what it is, no judgment. But if you really wanted a love relationship, how do you do it? If you have no examples around you, how do you do it? Will and Jada. You said what? I said Will and Jada Smith. That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just saying that um, oftentimes with young people, we right. do what our friends are doing. Right. Right? Right, right? And if our friends don't know, and we do what they do, we don't know. Then we don't know either. But I think kind of how every generation goes. I mean, I'm not know. saying they're different than any other gen generation. All I'm saying is that if there was an etiquette to it, if there was some structure to it, expectations, be it societal or parental, family, then we will behave a certain way. Without so, there being something like that, we go at it haphazardly and oftentimes we are just not successful. We say, I can't find love. Well, really? Okay. I, I don't know. I think that as a society, we don't move far away from what maybe our parents used to do, uh, their grandparents do, used to do, and then I don't know how, how, you know. But why? All of this technology, the stuff we're doing right here on the computer and stuff like that. Uh, but know, we moved away time. from it before technology. Because my generation is sandwiched in between my parents and this Millennium generation. Well, I can. I want to add something about the black community. Okay. I think some things were deliberately done to break the traditions in the black community. Up until 1960, we were what 80 percent uh, two parent families and stuff, and then in the 70s, that started going down dramatically, and then almost. 80s from the 80s to now it's almost non-existent 50 percent divorce rate and uh it's it's looking bad and, and, so and here's validating oh. exactly what i just said oh so it didn't happen with my generation my parents generation was the last ones that dated they my parents talked about courting courting and courting some more and my brothers and I were like, what the heck is courting? Stop talking to us about that. And they kept pushing for us to do things a certain way. So we could um, get in relationships that would be successful and lasting. I but I think that a successful relationship has to be modeled. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So even though my parents modeled it for my parents um, were married, they lived in the house together and they raised us. Believe me, I had a traditional nuclear family that I grew up in. But even with that, and my parents are loving people, even with all of that, I still didn't want to do things their way. I wanted to model myself after my friends who didn't know what they was doing, who didn't know what they was doing or what they were talking about. So when my parents, what I thought was old fashioned talk was really what I should have been listening to. I was listening to it out, you know, the side of my neck, but not with my ears. I didn't use it in at that time, but now I benefit from those lessons now. They make sense now. Now that I made all my mistakes, yeah. 
You understand what I'm saying? I heard you. I understand. All right. So dating is something that is useful because it teaches you about yourself. It teaches you about other people. You learn your limitations and you learn how to, um, to coalesce with another person. You don't have to live with the person before as what was revealed in the movie because that was that Valerie's generation, the 90 year old uh, woman in the documentary, her generation was my parents' generation. So I completely related to what she was saying to her son because that's what my parents said to, to us. I do believe in those things, even though I didn't do it that way. You understand what I mean? I understand. I think uh, most most children at some point get to the point where they want to rebel, especially when adolescence kind of kicks in and all of that kind of stuff. They want pretty much their friends are their strongest influence. You know, you know what I'm talking about? I'm a product of it. I know what you're talking I, about. I don't think it's going to go back. I don't. It I, might not go back, but I'm sharing this with those that are younger to say that the wisdom that you don't think your parents have you might need to listen to it. You just might need to listen to it because their way may, their way and the lessons that they learned along the way might be so useful to you in your life today. So for me, um, I'm in my twenties and I've always had like a rather close relationship with my parents. So their relationship advice was so important to me. So I, I now remember like having friends who just didn't talk to their parents. And I'm like, why? Like, they're such a great resource. Thank like, it's so, especially because most parents, not all parents, but most parents want the best for their children. You know what I mean? So if you just explain your situation and get their take on it, it doesn't mean you do exactly what they said or what, you know what I mean? But get their advice and their information because it can be so helpful. And I remember, like, using that in high school and having guys who were interested in me and me saying, look, this is what it's going to look like. If you're really interested in me, this is what I need from you. And the looks on their faces was like, what are you talking about? Is some thought to it? What right. I hear you? Exactly. And it's like, no, like, I just want someone who, like, I'm going to sleep with or I'm going to take to prom. And, like, that's it. And I'm like, oh, no, that's, I'm sorry, that's not what's going to happen here. That's right. <laughs> It's so challenging because it, it makes you feel like you're crazy and like you're doing something wrong. And then it's like this pressure, of, at least for like me, there was like this pressure to be in a relationship and get somebody. And I was like, but I'm okay with being alone. So if I'm going to have a relationship, it's going to have to be something that is positive in my life. It's going to have to be something that is, is modeled the way I want it to be because there's nothing that I'm going to lose without one. You know what I mean? And I think it's a lot, it's, it's important for people to feel secure by themselves so that they don't make bad decisions in relationships. Mm -hmm. A lot of people would just keep stuff. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was my dog. But a lot of people keep stuff going just because they're afraid to be alone. Yeah. Oh my goodness, girl, you better speak. Okay. Another, another thing that women's live and women in the, uh, the work workplace, you know, that changed a whole lot of stuff right there. And that's kind of what started, the, uh, in my opinion, started the hookup culture. You know what I'm talking about? Uh, you know what, Mr. Jones, I'm going to stop you right there. Well, <laughs> I'm going to stop. You ain't going to kick off that. Not on my good last day. No, 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 you not. Some people just want to hook up. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, I get let's, that. Let's, let's break some wine. Uh, good and good. Read, read. Well, okay. Connecting women's live to that. That's a loose connection, but I, I could see it. It's but that's women out here, they, they're trying to have careers. Y'all, 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 it's more y'all graduating from college than us. And so if y'all making, y'all smart, intelligent women, and y'all making decisions just to have booty calls as opposed to- But you know people. that that was not, Okay, this is the only thing I'm going to say about that because I don't want to belabor it. You know I don't agree with that, and I am a woman. And I am a strong woman. So, no. 
You know I'm going to have something to say about it. Listen, 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 listen. The women's liberation had nothing to do with women what did it have to do or with black women? women. It is what happened, but it was to tear up the families. It was government's way of tearing up the black family. But it wasn't because black women didn't want it's a lot of black women big on that hook real hard. It's yeah, but I think hard. that I don't know why you're on that tip, but, leave, but leave please look at it again. Right. Because I'm just gonna say that all women are not bad. And just because I didn't say that either. I didn't we say that. work and we have careers doesn't mean that it's a threat to our relationships only if our relationships want to take it there want to take it that way okay then that, just what i'm saying is it, it, it was a tr change in tradition uh the uh, family tradition quite a bit because the woman and before all of that came down the woman would stay home and take care of the kids and da 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 and she you know it was it was kind of cool with that uh, unless it was something really bad going on in the home but okay, so if you remember so much, you remember that women didn't start that. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, well, they came. That was down on us, you know, because we had started, you know, trying to try to. Hey, look, I got a family, and I need to take care of them and all that kind of stuff. And so that was a way to break that down. But you're still missing my point. Neither one of us were involved in creating that, the black man or the black woman. But it was something that affected our community. But it wasn't because we chose that, and you know that. So stop saying that, Mr. Jones. You know that ain't true. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> let's move on to, uh, oh, let's move on to the sleep study. Oh. <laughs> Go back to sleep. <laughs> um, what did you guys think of it? Did you benefit? I remember what you said. I remember what you said, but other people don't know what your experiences were. Only I, you know, and I know. I've been having a sleep problem for a long time now. It's, you know, I, I, you know, I get up and down all night, you know, up and down all night. Yeah. It didn't do that much for me. So last semester, I did it with, um, at the beginning of COVID, I did it with my students last semester. And for them, it was useful because they were dealing with so much stress and anxiety at the top of this COVID pandemic. So for them, I got a lot more um, positive feedback, but I was hoping that you all would also benefit from it. So sleep helps us by giving our bodies the time that it needs to heal. So that's one reason why we were urging you towards eight hours. Um, another thing that happens is it helps to regulate your appetite. So you actually eat better. Um, it helps to regulate the mood. So you're um, calmer during your day. So sleep does a lot of good things for us. And as I mentioned earlier with my, how I like to protect myself and one of the pieces of my armor is sleep, getting enough sleep. Because if I don't get enough sleep, driving can be an issue. Yeah. Uh, me being short tempered can be an issue because I could snap at the wrong person, <laughs> you know, um, or just, I'm just less coordinated. Um, less organized in my thoughts when I don't sleep. So, and I overeat. More hours I'm awake, the longer I eat. 
If I'm up after midnight, I'm for sure going to start eating. <laughs> I'm so serious. So that is a problem. It's a problem. So sleep helps to regulate that. And if you weren't able to get benefit from it, you might try it at a different time. And um, maybe that'll be, you know, useful to you at a different time. Okay. Um, let me give you some updates on Corona. I don't know if you've been watching the news, but the Centers for Disease Control reported on July 8th that the coronavirus rages through the South and the West. And who was targeted in these statistics are Latinos and African Americans. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. So according to the CDC, they say that Latinos and African Americans con contract COVID-19 three times the rate of other groups, three times. Mm -hmm. And Latinos and American, African Americans die from the virus at twice the rate of other groups. Because when we go into hospitals, all of what we just read about is real. It's real. We're not going to get top care when we go in. Unless we're being cared for by people that look like us. Nurse Tina was right about everything she said. Everything she said. All right. On that same date, the statistic read that there was an increase, a 30% increase in cases. Over the last couple of weeks, 30% increase in cases. Florida had the highest single day total of any state of this entire pandemic. And that number, that one day rate of new cases, 15,300 in one day. Jesus. California, one day. 11,694. New York, 11,571. Well, okay, I, I, people were in a rush to get back out there, you know, to open things up. And I guess that, you know, that's a, that's a bad choices. You're making bad choices right there. If you don't have to do it, why? why? You know what I'm talking about? The government was, for a while was, trying to take care of everybody, but they they started protesting and stuff about that, you know. What what's it's not gonna go back to normal until the coronavirus is dead. That's that should be a given right there. And and, I, and uh, I wouldn't go out there for, don't know when that's gonna be unfortunately for money, job or nothing. I wouldn't go back out there for nothing like that. So they're having College-age people are having COVID-19 parties. Do you know what that means? No. Girl, this, they, they don't believe it. They think it's a hoax. That's what they think it is. They do think it's a hoax. Um, they said the, they invite an infected person to the party, and the first person to test positive after the party wins the pot meaning that they charge everybody to get into the party. And so whatever the pot grows to is the cash prize that that person gets when they can show that they've tested positive. Because for some odd reason. Stop it, are you serious? That, that was on the news today. Ah. I, read, I read about a guy I that died. Up to this, and I'm just like, I cannot. The anxiety of it all. I, believe, I, I read about a guy dying from going to. Yes, one of and parties. the gentleman who went to one of these parties. Died. <laughs> while he was in the hospital, they interviewed him, and he was like, "This is the worst mistake I've ever made in my life." And the next day, he died. 
Dyke. I mean, honestly. <laughs> the whole concept of when people are sick, you're supposed to not be around them is just, what? <laughs> what? Does it bother anyone else that, like, the rules are so simple, too? Like, you could just follow them. I don't understand. Wear your mask when you're outside. Stay six feet apart. Stay in quarantine. Don't go to other people's houses. Like, it's so simple and yet we're out here just doing whatever we want to the point where other countries have cut off americans and they're like no you cannot come, <laughs> you, can't come here. you guys you stupid americans and i'm here. like yo as a traveler that hurts my soul because i don't know how long that's gonna last and it's like i can't believe it just follow the rules it's so simple so simple I hear of hookups now. That put me in a, a, I don't even know. But this, this really makes me sad. Because what has to happen for people to take it seriously? What has to happen? Someone they know has to sit, get sick and die. But that, that cost is too high. No shit, yeah, exactly. But that's like the only way this people see things is when it's, that's what I was saying about like being a white person. It's like, you know, until you're told and it's your decision at that point to recognize that this is the world, not just your own perception of it. It's like, that goes with everything. It's like, this is the world. It's just not your own personal perception. So, uh, uh -huh. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Uh, have you noticed that it's a, it's a spiritual downfield when you, whenever you're outside? Have you noticed that? It's, you a, know. it's not, it's like it's a pall. That's the word, I think. It's a pall over it. I don't know. It's definitely different. Environment. So. It's definitely different. And it's sad. It's real sad. So I, I, you know, I hope we get through this. But it's a lot of people going to die. Yeah. So I, I want everybody here that's in this class to practice safety. You know what I'm talking about? As hard as it is, I believe that that is what we're doing. As hard as it is. Yeah. You know? All right. All right. Well, anyway, uh, that's, it's with us. That's our, that's our reality. Yeah. So what are we going to do for the assignments? How do we sign up for the uh, presentation? Do we, do we do them like what, or Zoom meetings or whatever for the... Uh, yes. I... Um, put the sign up up already. It's on modules like everything else. All you have to do is tell me. Um, I've updated it. Last time I updated it was like 11 o'clock, but I can see that I have some messages in my inbox right now. It's first come first serve, but there's plenty of slots. I put time slots from 12 to 2 and then from 5 to 7 on both Wednesday and Thursday. So there's plenty of time slots. All right. Okay. Now, one other thing about the, the course uh, feedback. When, when is that going to be available? It's is that a question, is that a question and answer thing? Yeah. Everything's available. Is that a question and answer thing? Or? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's okay. just one question that you have to respond to. One question. Okay, good. I mean, you know, like sometimes I, I look in the early in the morning and then when I get ready to do this, I don't look and then you say you've posted it already and it's just, all right, I didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, your early and my early is two different early, so I'm just going to say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I have to make um, some changes before I post, so sometimes mine goes up a little bit later. All right. 
But if you have questions between now and when will the grades be posted? <laughs> you know what, Mr. Jones? What? It's not gonna be today. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, I'm just realistically like, hey, you can look so at So even it. when they post, you won't see them until emissions and records post them. So I turn them in in a week, okay. but they you won't see them until admissions and records post them. Uh, okay, well, thank you. I'm trying to ask questions because I haven't did no school like this before. COVID-19 me, makes me do something like this to keep Keep it, keep busy, you know. Stay yeah. and busy. So I, I have to ask some questions. So I get my, you know, get get my footing. Right. right. So you. I have one last thing to share with you all, and then we are done, done. All right. So um, hold on one second. Uh, one. Give me one second. This takes like one minute. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Yamoja has um, both opening ceremonies and closing ceremonies. So our opening ceremony was the presentation about You Matter. Okay. So the closing ceremony are just what I want you to leave the course with. Okay. This word, asante, is a Swahili term that means thank you. And I want to thank you all for all of your hard work and for hanging in with me and, um, and allowing me to engage you in these deep conversations. Sawubona is a Zulu tribe term. That means I see you. If you hear someone say Sawubona, they are part of the Umoja community. Um, and this just lets them know that you see them, you acknowledge them fully um, in the way in which Umoja people do. I also must say here that this class is an homage to my third grade class at Garfield Elementary School in Oakland because my teacher was, um, she studied African studies and she created um, an African village in the classroom. So we learned way more than you guys are learning right now, but in a different way. So we learned about African cooking. I learned how to corn roll and uh, bead hair and macrame. And we learned Swahili and African dance. And it was just the greatest thing ever. So this is really an homage to um, Dr. Johnson. And then my last is um, Nuzuri Ya Afa um, Kwako which is a Swahili phrase to mean good health to you. That's what I say to all of my classes. Good health to you. Take care of yourselves. Wash your hands. <laughs> all the day. All the time. All the time. All the time. So, all right, you guys. I will talk to you either Wednesday or Thursday and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you. You're welcome. And you'll do fine on, on the bills. I know you will. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Have a good day, you guys. Y'all take care now. Everybody, y'all, it was good to, uh, hearing y'all, uh, you know, responses to the uh, discussions. It was good to meet y'all and stuff. I wish we could have did a class thing. You know, that's how I like to do it. But this is the next best thing. Thank you. The next best thing. So Bye. I appreciate you guys hanging in there and be good. But we'll talk individually. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.